All right, good afternoon, everyone. So I'm here to record a little bit of a patch for a mistake that I made in the uh, 19th lecture, the first video lecture. Uh, basically, the analysis, uh, the, the you know analysis showing that the uh, reduction uh, on the slide after this from TSP optimal value to TSP decision. I, I was trying to show that that was a polytime reduction and I messed up one step and I wanted to kind of point out what the solution was, what the fix to the, the argument was. Okay, so here on this input size cheat sheet I want to make one uh, amendment. Let me make my mouse cursor look a little better here. Uh, Laser pointer. Okay, so see here, previously we just had uh, perfectly fine choices of size i for an integer were uh, 1 or log x. Now really you want something more like the ceiling of log x plus 1. Why? Because, well, if you want to write down x equals 1, you're going to need at least one bit to write that down in binary, right? Um, and so if x is 1, what's log x? Well, uh, log 1 is 0. So this would say previously log x would say previously we need zero bits to write this down, okay? So that's problematic. <laughs> uh, so if we do log x plus one, okay, well then we're gonna, it's gonna be log two, log base two of two, that we're imagining this is log base two. Uh, log base two of two is one, that would say we need one bit, but then we also need the ceiling because, you know, for x equal two, uh, log x plus one without the ceilings would just be log three. And log three is like a floating point number; it's not an integer. And if we if we round it down, we get one bit. If we round it up, we get two bits, which is what we what we need to write down x equals two in binary. So we need the ceiling to make it two bits. And then, as we expect, for x equals four, this will be three bits. For x equals five, it'll be four bits. For x equals eight, it'll be four bits, and so on. Okay. Now you don't need to preserve. You don't need to keep this this ceiling here and the plus one if it complicates your analysis and you don't need those things to complete your analysis successfully. You don't need to keep that complexity if you don't need the ceiling to achieve your desired analysis result or the plus one to, to achieve your desired analysis result, then just lose them. You can simplify to log x plus one or just log x, okay? Now similarly down here, when we're dealing with edge weights, okay, to write down, you know, edge weight w of e for similar reasons, I actually need to, to use ceiling of log w e plus one bits. Now I'm not showing the ceiling here because the ceiling kind of complicates the analysis and in most cases you can get away with just the plus one. It turns out this will be enough for the analysis in this case to work out. And that's the same thing here for this array of integers and for this matrix, you know, this plus one, it's there if you need it, okay? If you don't need this plus one for your analysis to work out, you could just simplify your expression by throwing out this plus one and that's also a reasonable choice of size i if that allows your analysis to work out. Okay, chopping off this plus one is not going to change the answer, uh, you know, of whether this is, whether, you know, you're going to be polynomial uh, in the input size or not. This plus one isn't going to make, isn't going to make the difference. At least deleting it is not going to ruin your analysis. But if you need this plus one, you can include it. If you don't need it, you can get rid of it. You can just simplify to the old expressions we had before. Okay, so let's go to this analysis and see what I messed up. So, okay, what's our runtime? Remember, we're assuming uh, unit cost operations on weights. So here are sort of all the various costs that we had, and our runtime was order uh, number of edges plus this uh, log of the sum of weights, okay? Um, so that, that's, that's true, because where does this log of sum of weights come from? It, it comes from this term, high minus low, which is zero. So high minus low is just this term. And the log of this is the log of the size of the range we're binary searching. So that actually is a correct term, even without the plus one there, because this isn't about how many bits we need to write down w. This is actually summing up all the w's, all the weights. Okay, now if we pick the most similar expression to this uh, from our, our you know, cheat sheet table uh, of sizes, then you know, we'll pick sort of the cardinality of e plus the sum of log weight plus one for each weight in the graph. Okay, so how are t of i and size i related? Well, we're sort of comparing, uh, you know, t of i, which has this log of sum of weights, to size of i, which has the sum of log of weight plus ones, okay? And our logs are sort of in the wrong place, so we have log sum and we have sum log. So how do we relate these two? Well, uh, log sum of weights, okay, is 
It's going to, that's going to be less than or equal to log product of weight plus ones. Why? All of our weights here are positive integers. So the weight is at least one. So weight plus one is at least two. So this is a product of things that are two or larger. The product of things that are two or larger is going to be bigger than the sum of those same things that are two or larger, okay? So the log of the sum of weights is less than or equal to the log of the product of weights. And what's the log of the product of weights? Well, remember, if we have a product, a times b, and we take the log of it, that's log of a plus log of b. So the log of the product of weights, is of weight plus ones, is going to be equal to the sum of logs of weight plus ones, okay? So we've argued here that log sum of weights is less than or equal to sum of log weight plus ones. Okay, so this term, the second term in the TI runtime expression, is actually smaller. It's less equal, modulo these constant factors in the big O notation. It's less than or equal to this second term in the size expression. And of course, the, if we ignore the, these constant factors from the O, then you know this E term here matches this E term, and this second term in TI is less than or equal to the second term in size I, okay? But what about these constant factors in the big O? Well, that's not a problem, because all we're trying to argue is that t of i is in big O of, of size i, or really that t of i is in poly of size i, okay? So what this means is there, you know, t of i is less than some constant times this, okay? So invert uh, that constant, or sorry, um, uh, sorry, take that constant, c t so t of i is less than or equal to, to c times this, okay? So take that constant, and then multiply size i by that constant. And now t of i is less than or equal to that constant times size i. That tells us that t of i is in big O of size i. And so we have t of i is in poly of size i because it's, it's less than or equal to, sorry, this is not one. It's less than or equal to some constant, whatever the constant is in this big O notation. It's less than or equal to some constant times size i to the one. Okay, so this reduction does have polynomial time in the input size. The trick is we had to be a little bit careful to avoid this nasty loophole where if I didn't have this plus one, then any weight that was one, log of one would be zero. And we'd be saying we're using zero bits to write down that weight, which is not correct. And because of that, we failed to show that the, the T of I expression was less than or equal to constant times or, or less than or equal to a polynomial function of the right side of the expression, the size I expression. Okay, so, so this line here where I tried to argue that the log of sums of weights is less than or equal to the log of product of weights, that didn't work out unless I had this plus one because there was this loophole where we were saying the number of bits needed to write down a weight with value one was zero. So we had this nasty sort of loophole there in the theory. Okay, so hopefully this explains how adding in this plus one kind of helps us. And uh, I'm going to go through the next lecture and see if this, if I made sort of a similar mistake there. But I, I don't think I did. So fingers crossed. And uh, thanks for your attention.